issues and impacts on negotiating behavior. But I would say maybe before we um, start, we can just real quick just go around and just say your name. And just From what culture? And then she's oh, well, 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 That would be relevant. Yeah, we're <laughs> <good. laughs> okay. yeah. So, I'm Iksima al I'm from Jordan. Uh, I work at the CBTO uh, as an evaluation officer. And I, I studied nuclear physics, so that's why I came here. Okay. Francis Marshall, United States. I'm here at IAEA in research reactors. Uh, my name is Dinara Basuva. I was a member of WING from Azerbaijan side. Mm -hmm. Great. So now I'm a consultant here in IAEA in NA. Good afternoon. My name is Sandra Stasko. I'm from Sweden and I work in IAEA Technical Cooperation. Hi, my name is Olga. I'm uh, from Ukraine and working with Asal and nuclear security. My name is Tatiana. Uh, Tatiana, I'm also working in nuclear security together with SL. My name is Lily. I'm also working with SL. I'm a Toastmaster. I'm from Australia. My parents come from Czechoslovakia, met in France. My husband's Austrian. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good example. Oh my god. <laughs> Lily, you will have examples for us. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Lily Suzy. Also, showing in Chinese. I'm coming from China and uh, works in IAEA um, nuclear transportation safety. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rochelle Tolton. I come from the US and I'm a consultant with the radon program. I am Kmail Nikitiva. I came from uh, Russian Federation and now I'm working as a consultant for, nuclear, uh, for safety of nuclear fuel cycle. My name is Christy Lewis. I'm working for the IEA, the Cost Information Management, in the section for state declared information analysis. Um, yes, I'm Austrian. Austrian. <laughs> okay. We have such a great conversation. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, thank you very much, Francis. Thank you very much. I think this is a great opportunity for me to share some of the, the research that I've done. You'll see the study, you will see some references that I suggest that we read. Some of it is my personal opinion. So. Whenever you feel like you want to stop me, share an example, ask me, please do that, because this is interactive, this is not a lecture. I'm sure you probably know more than I do, I'm just sharing this with you. So, I actually rephrased the title, How National Culture Impacts Negotiation Behavior, and you will understand why I did that. So, this is just to give you the outline. So, first, we'll uh, put the, my colleagues, thanks for, for your support, by the way. They handed out the clickers to you, so we'll be using this personal response system, so it would be very interactive and it would be more fun. And I'll get more feedback from you right away, so I'll be able to tailor my responses and my questions with you at the same time. So we'll do clicker questions to warm up. Then I'll tell you about the cultural, what uh, cultural differences, what difficulties they present at four levels. We'll, do, we'll discuss some examples. We will also look how to overcome those cultural differences. We will look at our UN environment, and I will also discuss some of the case studies with you. Uh, and we will have our general discussion if you'd like to, and we'll, again, again, we'll do the clicker questions in the end. So, what you have in front of you, these are the clickers that we actually use for our training courses. So, please have a look. We have to make sure it's on Enter. So, device is on Enter, and the channel in the right left corner you see is 41. Mm -hmm. Please let me know if it's not 41, so I can adjust that for you, or my colleagues can do that. We just have to make sure everybody has channel 41. So once, once, so what you did is enter, then channel 41, and when you click, you just need to press A, B, C, D, or E. During that session, you can always change your response. It's not like you've done it, and but if you want to change your mind, if you want to. Um, change it, you can always do that during the, the survey. So everybody's on channel 41. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do our first clicker question, mm -hmm. just to warm up. So here you would see polling closed. When I say polling open, and I will open it now, who is your favorite composer? A. Wolken, G. Strauss, C. Chopin, D. Brahms, or other? So please vote. And I see the responses. Eight. How many people are we here? One, two, three, four, five, 
11, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, 10 responses. Why do we have to die? Hunt myself? No. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, then no. Oh, oh, yeah, 11. Great. What if I have more than one? Really? Yeah, uh, more than one. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. This is the Yeah, you can. <laughs> you can tell us verbally. <laughs> sorry. Sometimes you can also yeah. do two responses. It depends. So let's see the results. <coughs> wow! Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've actually also been mm -hmm. selecting A as well. So you see how it works. Mm -hmm. So this is for us just to warm up. Yeah. So the next question relates to our topic today. And I'll open it right away because maybe you need less time to think about it. So to negotiate means, what does it mean to you? To get what you want or to communicate, to seek mutually beneficial solution and understand counterpart's perspective, to politely argue with your counterpart. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you, you really grasped this really quickly. <laughs> That's great. Let's see. Yeah. My gosh! Wow. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Perfect! Oh my god, I don't know. Yeah. This is not what I expected, but I guess yeah, this is perfect. International organization of course! Yeah, this, would be, this is like a, HR should do this, right? Right in the beginning. Alright, let's. are you ready for the next one? We'll do four in the beginning. So I'll open it. Cross-culture negotiation experience. So I just need to know what is your experience. So I'll be able to understand what I'm dealing with here. Either none, some experience, I'm well aware of cultural barriers to negotiation, I would like to know more about this topic, or I can share some stories. Please, if you, if you have some stories, please share. <laughs> don't say you don't have any stories. Seven responses. Take your time. I, mean, I think we have time. What time? Till no, only 12.30. Okay. Or 1.30, excuse me. 1.30, okay, perfect. One more. Yeah, should we go ahead? Let's see. Okay. I would like to know more. That's the majority, right? Stories. Yay! Ten percent. Ten percent, that would be one percent. One percent. <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous. <laughs> some experience, all right. none, great. So we, all of us have some experience. So I have a trick question for you here. It's a true and false. National culture determines negotiation behavior. Is this true or false? It's going to be a factor. <laughs> Tricky. We'll go back to this question at the end again once we do the presentation, but I want you to think about it. One more person is really shy or just doesn't really? Ten? Maybe it doesn't be nice. Discussing cultural differences and the cultural differences that present problems at four levels language, nonverbal behavior, values, thinking, and decision making processes. So, do you think the order here is important? Why is this in that order? I, I think language would have to be first because that's the starting point of the communication. I'm not sure that there's an order to the others mm -hmm. at this point. Maybe I'll know more at the end of the hour. Yeah. Any other views? Why is there is do you think there is a particular order? Why I group them like that? Because everything starts from language. Yeah, so 
the, the, the ones that are harder to detect and understand are coming up the lower on the list. Mm -hmm. You will understand why. Mm -hmm. We will see some examples of that. So let's discuss language first. So Francis gave a really good example here. And I go into my next slide. Translation, interpretation. So we know, of course, here the when we use English. English says that we, a lot of us, English is either second language or third language or fourth language. And of course, interpretation, translation, this is something that's never, it's perfect, it's never attained. There's a lot of terminology, we all face that in negotiations. Language differences can be exploited in interesting ways, and I have a very good example for you. <laughs> so I, I used to travel, I worked in Kazakhstan for the operations, I used to travel with my CEO here. We actually were in this room, which is interesting. <laughs> in this room, he's, he was sitting right here, and he said, I speak English, not so good, but I know he pretended. <laughs> he understood English, he just said, my accent is so terrible, please, can you interpret? So I did. But I noticed something, that he's using this advantage. Uh -huh. How? Yeah. So while I was yeah. interpreting, it gives him this yeah. extra time to respond. Mm -hmm. So because with, when you talk to him, he actually can understand and he forms his response mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that last time, I was like, I think I know why you're doing this. He's like, no, 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 I sound so terrible. This is, so this is very good. This is, you can use that advantage in a quite interesting way. So like I say, competitors with greater language skills are afforded a natural advantage. Also, side conversations. This is what I'm, I want to focus on the last, last line because sometimes what, my experience is that you will have somebody on the other side, a delegate from, from China, uh, Japan, and I did a lot of, I didn't participate in a lot of negotiations when they start to engage in the side conversations. And you get a little distressed. You think, okay, what's going on? Why are they, what, what exactly are they doing? Why, is this, they're taking this seriously or what? So some cultures, when you are faced with that, you would think, huh, maybe that's normal, right? And we will look at some of the examples, but maybe that's normal. So let's just keep that in mind. Um, I remember we negotiated with a company from China. We used to sell uranium to them directly. And there was a big delegation coming from China. And they told me that they actually have somebody in the delegation who speaks Russian. They specifically travel. Every time they would bring somebody who does speak Russian, but they never told us who. <laughs> and we thought, why? You know why? Because they wanted to hear our side conversation. And that was a big advantage. Right? So, nonverbal behavior. Now we're getting the difficulty level is increasing here. And we'll understand why. So, before I go into examples, I used the study of international negotiation behavior that was conducted over the last three decades. They analyzed 1,500 people in 17 countries that's 21 cultures. And so the fundings, these uh, results will be presented in the following slides. So I, this is really important for you to see that I took this not from my experience, not from some assumptions, not stereotypes. This is a particular study we're going to be looking at. But before we go into the study, let's do a clicker question here. So let's get ready. Let's get our clickers ready. So I want you to think about this. A message is conveyed in conversations, face-to-face -face interactions, the message is conveyed by, so either 60% word spoken, 40% from facial, or 7% word spoken, 38 things, how things are said, 55 from facial expressions, and C, 20% facial, 40% how things are said, 40% words, and the D one is my favorite, smile and good looks. <laughs> <laughs> Think about face, facial interaction, face to face. The person is talking right in front of you. How much message are you getting from words, mm -hmm. facial? You're observing his nonverbal behavior. One more. Perfect. All right, let's see the results here. Mm -hmm. B. Wow, what is the right answer? Actually, this one, in the beginning, I said there are no right answers, but actually, there are. This is B. Yeah. This is from the study. But still, see, see, this is, yeah, this is really good. Nobody picked A, okay. and nobody picked smile, good looks, really? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when you talk to opposite sex, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl, yeah, B. 
was the one that I got from the study. So 7% words, and I'll show you that on this chart. So according to USCL psychologist, he actually studied this for oh, more than 20 years. So his results, he says that face-to-face -face interaction, when the person talks, 7% is what he's saying. 38, how things are said. 55% facial expressions. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So nonverbal, you see how important it is. Why it's getting lower in the list. Language, now we're going to nonverbal. We important we keep this in mind. We will need this information later. So again, this is the study. This is not stereotypes. This is not my inter this is not my observations. This is what I got from the study. So we're gonna give you some examples here. Japanese, Korean, Spaniards, Brazilians, I have more examples. Japanese are actually in a very extreme case. When they studied the 1,500 people, and they, they think the culture of Japan is the one that on the very end of the spectrum. They, are, they have very unique nonverbal behaviors. They use silent periods. What do you think? What does that mean, silent periods in negotiation? So you ask someone, right? And they, they go into a silent period. And some people would worry. They would think, okay, what does that mean? Are they trying to get me nervous here? Or are they trying to get more information? Or what's going on? I don't know, have you worked with somebody from Japan? I'm sure we're here. We have that opportunity, right? We can, we can see this. And I know I have my, my colleague. I work with, we have our colleague from Japan. And he does that. He does go into a silent period. In the beginning, it was a little difficult for me to comprehend that. Because time is money. Come on, I need to get that, <laughs> that, that answer from you. But silent period. Sometimes also English could be a problem. So <laughs> yeah, it sometimes it, it then makes you or the person talking to them feel like they have to fill this space. Exactly, and right? right? You think that. Well, I want you think that. that. And then yeah. it's not yeah. this. It's yeah. Exactly. So this is something just to remember that the, for Japanese, sound periods are normal. Like I said, very unique, not verbal, polite, positive promises. So how, how much of this is true? How much of this is noticed? Recommendations, commitments, and frequent use of no and you. Mm -hmm. So getting no from my colleague is, I, I never heard that. Sometimes he says that's difficult. That means it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> he told me last time, I was like, is this? That's difficult. <coughs> okay, got it. I understood. That's been perfect. <coughs> Facial gazing. Yeah, Facial gazing, not direct, not looking into the eyes. And you think, oh, gosh, is he hiding something? What's going on? No. This is something that comes naturally to him. Interesting that Koreans, this is not East versus West. Koreans use considerably more punishment commands, interrupt, use the word no. <laughs> and I've actually we've dealt, we had a negotiation with Koreans before. Oh my gosh, they were so, they were right into your face, they were direct. They said no very frequently. And I said, this is yeah, def definitely East versus West, not true. Yeah, yeah. It's like Korean, all Korean? Like uh, North Korea, South Korea? No, the study doesn't say that. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, yes, I'm not sure. I think, but in general, 1,500 people that they study, 21 cultures, and this is what they, they observed. Because they actually observed it. Because people who go to Korea, to South Korea, they say it's absolutely way different from North Korea. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you can even yeah. go deeper to yeah. study even different yeah. ethnicities within that mm -hmm. culture. So. Uh, Spaniards, Brazilians, use of the command words. Example, dig. I gave that example. Actually, I saw that example there as well, and I remembered I used to work for a Spanish company, and my boss was sitting with me in the same office, and he used to pick up a phone when somebody called and he says, Diga. It's like, oh, that's just incredible, right? Like, talk. Who do you want? And so you see that in their culture, it's, it's normal, interrupting each other, right? Right in the middle, it's the, you don't even, you, you continue yeah. talking, they interrupt you, they want to get more information, time is, perception of time is different, you, they use no, of course they use you, and they, they use that very frequently. French. For some reason, the study says, very aggressive, threats, warning, spatial gazing, no, you, so this is amazing. That, that's how, they, that's how they, the study shows that French are very aggressive in negotiations, and this is something to expect from them. Chinese. Ask a lot of questions, information exchange tactics. <laughs> is that something, do you think this, this is correct? This is, that's what they observe, that they ask a lot of questions, they want to follow up, they, they want to understand it, they engage inside conversations right away to get it clear, they discuss the whole agreement right away, they don't go into details. This is what they, the study found. 
Actually, my experience is the same that I've noticed. Uh, so, yes, you should ask my friend because I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Interesting. Russians, similar to Japanese, use silent periods, use no infrequently. Interesting, isn't it? Germans and Americans, straightforward, high percentage of self disclosures, mm -hmm. less questions. Mm -hmm. You see? This is, that's what the study yielded. So, Let's just remember those examples here, and we go into values even deeper to detect and understand. And here, just I'll, I'll give you a few examples that I would, but I would actually encourage you to read that study, and I will give you more references so that you read about this. But I have an example: school decision-making um, process of consensus versus democracy, or individualism versus communitarianism. So this example: consensus versus democracy. So my company, we actually purchased 10% of Westinghouse. So we travel to board meetings to US. Japanese, Toshiba owns 90%. So they purchased 90%, we purchased 10%. We had negotiations, three cultures at the table. When it came to voting, <laughs> it took us days and weeks. We just, we had to prolong our visas. We had to stay longer because we couldn't get any consensus. And then we understood why. Because Americans stay for women as a way of majority votes, they agree, we're done. Japanese, everybody needs to say yes. So for them, it was important to get the whole group consensus. Yes. They say, everybody needs to agree, then we go on. But that's, that's just what, for us, for Kazakhs, we were kind of taking this third, uh, third cult tribute. We're standing there and thinking, gosh, the majority votes, and then we, I guess we go with the vote. But, it was so hard to get something out of them because we understood the differences versus consensus versus democracy. So that's one of the maybe some of you know some examples that they can share of how values, really values, which are deeper. Um, I uh, I agree with you, and but there are also more, of course, maybe also uh, in some cultures it's not only about democracy uh, or consensus. There is also if a certain person is like the chief of the boss, but say yes, then that's it. You see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But how do you know them? Yeah. How do you actually know them? How do you prepare for something? So they will like the rest will stay silent when he says yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. So yes. because, well, how do you know that person is important? Mm -hmm. When we had the delegation from China, they almost hired me. I worked in the car for that time, and I put the vice president in the car with everybody else, and the. The lowest manager was in the car with the VP. I didn't even know who is, who, who is what's the hierarchy there, you know? When we met them at the airport, I made that mistake. There should be a protocol. Exactly, there's yeah. protocols, yeah. things to follow. You think, oh God, this, this guy's a decision maker. Maybe we should treat him that way yes. as a VIP. But how do you know that? Thinking decision making processes is one of the other ways to look at it. So, Exact examples. Western sequential approach versus Eastern holistic approach. Negotiation is a problem-solving activity versus negotiation is a time to develop a relationship with the goal of a long-term mutual benefit. Sequential approach, holistic approach. When we signed the contract, for example, we used to work with, um, again, I think Japan is a great example. Kazakhstan just, you know, we exported uh, uranium worldwide. So we used to work with a lot of companies from Europe. From, I was responsible for um, Asia and North America. And I remember we uh, approached the, our Japanese uh, colleagues and we said, okay, today we're going to go into contract detail. So we're going to discuss quality, we're going to discuss quantity, delivery. They're like, no. We want to discuss the whole agreement first. Ah, okay, fine. That's okay, yeah, let's do that. So then they just throw everything at you. Right? Mm -hmm. and the, so you discuss everything, and not in the, any order. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they think, gosh, what happened? What, what did we agree? And in the end, they said, okay, we take this price, fixed price, fine. What happened? <laughs> no, really? Great, okay. So what are we going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow we discuss price. Again, really, tomorrow we discuss delivery. So how do you approach that? Because I had that plan. And we came there with my president, I said, we're going to discuss this today. Oh, great, yeah, what's the agenda tomorrow? We're going to discuss it further. No, but then they throw everything at you. And you think, wow, this is how they do things at home. And the next day, we were more prepared for it. Problem solving activity or relationship building. So sometimes they would see, I'm sure you know examples, done on a more political or more, you know, <coughs> micro, minimal um, level. 
But for a company, sometimes you think, oh, we signed the contract, deal is done, that's the negotiation process. Some cultures not the same way. They want to test you, they want to see how, how they can trust you, how they can build a relationship with you. So there was a case study that the American company was opening an office in the Philippines. And they said, okay, let's, the price would be 0 0.3 cents for a product and we'll, you franchise it. And they said, no, why? What do you mean? It has to be higher than that. And the company said, no, but we're opening the business in the Philippines. I mean, we can open in another country. They said, well, go ahead and open in another country. <laughs> yeah, but this is, isn't that a big deal for you guys? No, it's not. We can approach somebody else. It's fine. But we want to test how, how you can help us. Okay, what can we do for you? So they asked the American company to help them advertise their product in the U.S. So what they're trying to do is penetrate the American market. So they said, this is a relationship. We'll build a relationship. You help us. We help you. And maybe then we can agree on price. Mm -hmm. But because that company made a mistake thinking, they'll come there, sign the contract, deal is done, that's it. We don't want to have anything to do with you. For Filipinos, this was important. This was a relationship building, not a contract signature. So that's important. You really have to understand what's the interest of the other side. Remember, we all agreed. Mm -hmm. Negotiate means yep. understand mm -hmm. the interest of the other party. And that's how you're able to negotiate further. Okay, so overcoming cultural difference. This is all perfect as hell. Cultural differences, four levels. But how do we overcome them? Rule number one, learn the other side's culture. And I think here at the UN we have a great opportunity because we work in such a diverse cross culture, right? We can ask our colleagues. So I would go to, I don't know, let's say I've been to Jordan, and I would ask that to say, can you tell me something about Jordan? Because I'm going there, and there's something I should be aware of, right? Timing. When did the meeting start? How, well, how should I dress? Or, you see, we how have a great talk? opportunity. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. The language, should we interpret? Do you think it would be nice for the, you know, host to know that we're going to bring our interpreter? Or, so we have to learn something about the other side. We just don't show up and say, oh, really? That's how they do things here? Great. Mm -hmm. Rule number two, don't stereotype. So whatever I told you before about Koreans, Chinese, Russians, forget about all this. Don't stereotype. Because there would be other factors, not only culture. And we will look at that a little later. Rule number three, be, three, be aware of your own culture and how others may perceive it. So I've actually asked you, I said, do you think this is true about Chinese? And you said, oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> you should ask somebody else. It's just this is awareness of how you behave. What's your perception of time? I think this is one of the really important topics. When you come to negotiating, table, you think, okay, time, time for me is really important. But what about the other side? How would they perceive me? Be aware of your own culture, how others they perceive it. Rule four, find ways to bridge the culture gap. How do we do that? Yeah, well, sorry. Uh, I was going to say before you move on, um, rule three is interesting because here at IAEA, you don't necessarily know what the other cultures are that you're working with. And I mean, when we host a meeting, we know where people are coming from, mm -hmm. but when we go somewhere, they don't necessarily know where we're from. And, yeah. and, um, and so I, I see maybe like the second day of a meeting, mm -hmm people will ask, you know, mm -hmm. where, where are you from? Because they're trying to sort of place you, you know. <laughs> what, what's your background and, and what, what is the, yeah. then the assumption of what their stereotype yeah. would be of who we are depending on where we're from. Exactly. So, yeah. so it's, it's a little bit not meant to be disingenuous where we're sort of, you know, hiding behind the UN umbrella. Yes, exactly. But, but people do then become curious because they have, you know, they, they want to put you in the, in the, in the right box. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I've actually, when people ask me, they said, you're kind of east, but you're not really east, you're kind of west. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> it's weird. But I think sometimes, have you read the book Third Culture Kids, Third Culture Adults? Yeah. People who've lived abroad, they have their third culture. They don't know, they actually don't know where they come from. And this is, this is really tricky. And here at the UN, you do meet people who have, speak like Brazilian languages and lived in so many cultures that they just lose the time, the, their own identity, and think, okay, what do you mean my culture? How does that, how do they perceive it? I don't know. So we will come back to third culture when I'm gonna give you an example. Rule four, find ways to bridge the culture gap, and I've done this infograph, that's how it's up. So one, two, three, four, this is four. I don't know why it didn't come up. So for one, how do we bridge the gap? Other side's culture. 
why do you think I say that? Why do you say to bridge the culture gap, you could use other sites' culture? Something in between, like to, to yeah, highlight, bridge. Yeah. to bridge yeah. them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So there was, uh, I don't remember exact names or exact timing, but I know there was a, there was a political negotiation on the politics level, and U.S. president or U.S. political candidate, somebody, negotiated with the Russian Federation. And uh, this participant, the Russian Federation, he said, oh, I am like the last of Mohicans. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the U.S., he said, how did you know that? That's interesting. That's, he said, I love that book by, by Cooper. I love that book. I read it. So that brought them together mm -hmm. because, like, he mm -hmm. see, he's more open-minded. He knows about the last Mohicans. Mm -hmm. So he made that comparison and actually to break the ice. Mm -hmm. Your own culture. Again, in, in business, there was a company they um, wanted to do a franchise in, um, I think it was in Korea. So what they did, they opened the franchise and they brought some Koreans to U.S. They paid them, they took money, education, they took money, time, education, for them to understand American way. Yeah, because I think they're opening McDonald's or something like that in Thailand, somewhere. So they're thinking, this is how we do it. So if you open the franchise in your country, you need to know American way. So they brought them to U.S. But that's, yeah, that's your own culture, meaning time, money, education. Both cultures. Maybe you can think of example. When you negotiate something, somebody with some other culture, you think, oh, I can bring up something valuable in both cultures. And you bridge it. It's a synergy. Third culture, common professional culture. And I think this is where we work. The third culture bridging the gap is our common professional culture. I, I took this from the study, but I, I'd like to emphasize that for us. And next slides would have my own opinion. And this is where we go into true story. <laughs> <laughs> this is a funny picture. I just give you some time here. So this is me. I've got different glasses. This is my colleague. This is a person from Kazakhstan. This is a person from Japan. This is a member state. And she happened to be actually from Russian Federation. This is important, 55% facial expressions. We have a, a negotiating on post-government agreement. This happened recently. <laughs> so, like I said, based on the true story. I love those movies when they say based on the true story. <laughs> this is so real, right? So, what happened was, the problem, this is a problem example. Next example would be a positive experience. Problem was, my colleague didn't tell me we're going to have a meeting with the member state discussing this case. And we didn't get prepared in advance. So when we got there, we discussed, we started discussing some very serious issues. And when she asked us, can we agree on something, my colleague just started nodding. Like this. Nodding. And I was sitting there thinking, no, no, we can't agree to that. But he's coming from a culture where nodding means I'm listening to you. It doesn't mean yes. It doesn't mean yes. So what I started doing, I looked at her and she was lost because there I sit doing this and he sits doing this. <laughs> And she's like, okay, so she says, I wonder if I'm getting mixed signals here. And see, I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Well, actually, I hope that's what she meant. <laughs> I don't know. But she looked confused. So I, I jumped in and I said, okay, no, 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 you know what? We can't discuss this with you right now. This is a serious topic. We will get back to you. And I looked at my colleagues like, we'll get back to you. And he started nodding again. Yes. That's great. <laughs> then the problem was that he was the team lead. So you see, this is a small team. He's a team lead. I follow what he says, but I, and she looks at him mostly mm -hmm. because she knows she, he needs to discuss it with her, and I kind of help, mm -hmm. right? So what happens? She asks again something, and then my colleague goes into silent period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we just sit there, and she says, okay, well, I guess it's clear now. Yeah, let's just discuss it. We agree on this. I said, no, we don't. And then, of course, I see a panic on his face. And then I say, why don't we just go back, get back to you within a week? Because I can't make any commitments right now. Thank you. <gasps> we have to go. I think our team wants to see us. And off we go. So when we go in the court, I say, gosh, I wish we had we discussed this before. Because imagine, I mean, with, this is a very important topic. And we didn't have a prior meeting. Mm -hmm. So negotiation stopped. We have to stop it. We had to stop it. Then together, we sat together and wrote an email to her explaining what happened, and telling her that we have to get back to them because it's a really important case. So this is a bad example. 
this is a positive example. So I was so fortunate that I was on this side, and this was LEU Bank. I don't know how many of you are aware of the LEU Bank um, agreement with Kazakhstan. It was signed. It, Kazakhstan volunteered in 2009 to host the Lower Mediterranean Bank in Kazakhstan, and I sent this cross-cultural team to negotiate. We've had 12 rounds of discussions. I was so fortunate because I was observing. I was on this side observing how well this group worked together. And look, remember what we said. French being aggressive, <laughs> Americans being straightforward, Canadians probably very close to Americans, British, great sense of humor as far as I know. <laughs> yes. Russian Federation. There was a participant from Russian Federation on this side. So imagine, cross-culture, against a member state. They knew, they, they knew how to operate with this cross-culture team. It was so perfect orchestrated. Because there was a tough question, we didn't respond, who jumped in? <laughs> Gosh, I just, this was just so great. The, the lead was Canadian, he was the leader. But he would always know who to direct. He, he used the, the knowledge of the culture. He, he used the, uh, the, the, oh my gosh, I just can't explain it, but I know that what I observed, this was a great team. And then I went further, well, this is a discussion that I wanted to raise, is how do you deal with cross-culture teams on one or both sides? Because sometimes we think, okay, how culture impacts negotiation behavior? What happens when you have different cultures on one side, different cultures on the other side? When you think about it, that's even, that's even more challenging. As far as I know, as far as my experience. Unido. I looked at Unido, and this is what I saw. Cultural factors. So, integrating model, effectiveness of cross-cultural teams. Cultural factors, cultural origin, professional cultures, generational cultures. And I do have a link to this. We could look at what they're doing, how they're addressing it. Probably there's something that HR does in our in, in UN overall, but I will like always wonder, how do we approach this? Maybe because we use our professional culture. Engineers talking to engineers, lawyers talking to lawyers, right? We forget where we come from. Maybe that's what it is. You ready for clickers? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do clickers. So, culture can be seen. Do we think we have somebody? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, hi. I'm sorry. Plato's in the meeting. That's fine, yeah. So, we're using clickers now. Okay. And it's, William, can you be sure it's on Enter and Channel 41 is on? So, it's a personal response system. It's like a survey. Yeah. So now it's open to polling, so let's think about it. Culture can be seen, therefore, as a silent language that the parties need in addition to the language they're speaking. Is this true or false? Twelve responses. Perfect. Yes! <laughs> All right, so now, this is a bit personal. Let's just think about how you, you approach this. When I negotiate with someone from another culture, I tend to either engage in side conversations with my colleagues. I know that you're not doing that, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straightforward, and I expect the other side to do the same. The period of silence is normal for me. I don't mind interrupting the other side when they speak to ask for clarification. I stereotype. I ignore where the other person is coming from and only rely on his or her professional background. Take your time. Just waiting for one more. Wow, B. I'm straightforward and expect the other side to do the same. 
Interesting. That's the majority of us. Is that something that human culture cultivates, I guess, right? Straightforward? <laughs> Direct? I don't expect. I don't think it's, no. it's wise to expect that. No one says E. That's good. Yeah. But don't stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> 70, amazing. 70, 70, 70% is E. Wow. We have somebody who engages in side conversations. Is there any other... Would you think of any other ones that we should, I should think of uh, including for questions like that? I could do, for example, choose more than two. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Is there anything else that we can think about, judging from, remember what we discussed? What else can we do? When I guess she... one of the things that, that I didn't see in here is trying to get some idea of someone's, um, not necessarily comfort zone, mm -hmm. but when you were talking about what your expectations <laughs> are for the meeting, to to try to get agreement on that before the meeting, oh, so see. that when you're in the meeting, it's, and it's not that you have to, oh, it's 10 o'clock, we need to move to the next item, as much as, today we kind of want to talk about these things. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we, we work hard to try to get some clarification on that up front, so that, um, you know, when, when we get there, the expectations are a little bit more solid exactly. than just coming in. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I guess I kind of see parts of where I would do some A, some B, some not mm -hmm. so much C. I don't think it's normal for me as much as um, just sort of listening and thinking about what the options could be, but also D. Um, so I, I see areas. Um, where that is. And then F as well is, is I tend to be very focused on the project mm -hmm. objectives yeah. and okay your role in this project is this for your expertise and that's for your expertise and so on and so forth. So I don't really see the, uh, the cultural part of you, you, or you right. as much as I see your professional contribution. And so I think there are elements of that where I could sort of pick any one of them except I hope not E. But <laughs> oh, this is a really good point. Mm -hmm. We can actually also rephrase it saying, when do I start negotiating? Yeah. When? This is preliminary. And actually, I do have another lecture on negotiation techniques, yeah. because I used to uh, lecture MBA students on negotiation techniques. starts very early. It's not at the table. It's the preliminaries. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. The preliminaries. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Here, I just wanted to focus on the cultural aspects, because basically, when you're online, you're you know, if somebody overseas, you don't really get that sense of where the person is coming from, culture and background. You could, but at the same time, but that's something, we can also rephrase it. We can say, when do you start negotiating, for example? You could add, uh, notice the, the body language. Ah, that's right. Yeah. Observing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Do you use that? that? Do you? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. 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 We could do more. I think yeah. Sandra yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I just wanted to say it's not so much the negotiation, but also the, the setting the stage and uh, a bit you mentioned it earlier about uh, breaking the ice a little bit. Exactly. Uh, this can also backfire though. You don't know because in exactly. some way that's really normal and you, you talk and in, in, some, in some cases really that, that doesn't go very far. It might even be inappropriate depending mm -hmm. on what you, what you say. Like I had a, um, I had a meeting uh, uh, two weeks ago actually with someone from Kazakhstan. Ah. And uh, she'd been here for a workshop, and then we had a meeting, just the two of us, to discuss uh, certain issues. And uh, and I just said, oh, you know, how how was the workshop? What is your impression? And it, she just kind of nodded her head and said, can we start? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, wow, you know, and it was interesting. And I was like, of course, you know, but uh, it doesn't always, you know, it doesn't always work. It's not part of person's yeah. culture to go into to yeah, that, true. Uh, as, a, true. as a starting. And we had an American delegation to our company yeah. once, and I had to wait. I actually went there early. I knew they were going to come early. I went there early. I waited for them, and I said, so how do you like Kazakhstan? Have you ever been yes, here? Yeah. And like, Great. And he's like, have you been to U.S.? So I said, yeah, I've been to U.S. I graduated from high school there. Oh, yeah, great. So we kind of had that warm-up session, and then my president come, came in. He's like, what are you doing? Are you entertaining them or something? <laughs> this is serious business. And like, he was so pissed at me for some reason. So I had a problem with my own, somebody from my own culture telling me, you shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. you do? This is serious discussion. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I also can I may add one point as well. Sure. How do you like uh, how do you approach when uh, 
the, like the heated discussions. Yes. Or like when it's ah, yeah, yeah. Get serious. Okay. Yeah. You're somebody. You're negotiating somebody was from France. <laughs> <laughs> aggressive. Yes. It's true. I never had that experience. I just so, I don't know. Are they really that aggressive? I don't think they are that Why aggressive. They? No. I I, I see? agree with that. Yeah. yeah. They're very straightforward. Very aggressive. Yeah. What about Italian? Oh, <laughs> emotions. Emotions are high. Emotions are high. My gosh. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting, isn't it? So, let's do one more. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll take a home. Other factors besides culture influence a person's negotiation behavior, and these are. Remember, I asked you this already. National culture determines negotiation behavior. Now I go back and say, other factors besides culture influence a person's negotiation behavior, and these are. Personality, experience, organization, he, she represents, the context, the particular negotiation, or all of the above. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the last one. Easy. To, to the meeting that you had was um, in, in the U.S. it was popular for a while to do this, this sort of um, training where you'd um, find another way to bend people in terms of it was amiable, analytical, mm -hmm. um, and I forget what the other two were, mm -hmm. but the amiable is the one that starts with, well, how's the weather, you know, how was your weekend, yeah. you know, what'd you do, what'd you have for lunch, how are things, and then maybe half an hour later you actually get down to the you know, brass tacks of what you want to talk about, and I'm more on the analytical, which is, mm -hmm. okay, we're here, we're starting, let's start with the agenda. And, and I had a customer that was way on the other end, where he would go into the, the pleasantries for, you know, it seemed like 15 minutes, on what should have been a five-minute phone call. And, 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 and so it, it took me a while to realize this is just how he wants to have that communication. And so it drove how we did our... Exactly. You know, conversations. Yeah, I mean, there's so many factors, yeah. right? You gotta be. I think it's all about flexibility, really. Yeah, yeah. not having a lot of like high expectations or something. Coming there knowing that you're gonna be flexible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's all I had. Here I had the references. So this is the book. I love that book, Look, Global Negotiator. If you'd like to read that, mm -hmm. it's on Kindle. I mean, you can find it anywhere. I think this presentation I can also send this to you. Yes. 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 And this is the team building at Unido. If you just want to read about it, then it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I had for you folks. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.